YouTube! Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am bringing you some book recommendations. In case you weren't aware, May is actually Asian and Pacific Heritage Month, and I believe I've seen this going around a little bit that 2019 is going to be the year of Asian reading, so I wanted to give you guys a few book recs that I really love and are all by Asian authors. I'm going to start off with some romance. I have Hate to Want You by Alicia Rai. She has written tons of books and they are great little smutty delights. It's a smutty, smutty romance and it's full of melodrama. So if you're like me and sometimes you just want to see something be like over the top dramatic because it's ridiculous, but you're just like, oh my gosh, popcorn, nom 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 nom. <laughs> you can't look away. It's so compelling, even though it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously melodramatic and I love it. So if you're like that too, where you get really into it, even though it's silly, but it's also really full of a lot of smutty delights and like good smutty delights. Legit, it, it's good smut. <laughs> I really recommend Alicia Rai. She writes really cool books. I enjoy them quite a bit. If you want this like a fun smutty romance, this is your, this is your girl right here. I also recommend Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. This is legit so funny. It's kind of, um, it plays with superhero tropes. It follows a girl named Evie who is the personal assistant to like San Francisco's top superhero, Aveda Jupiter. I know, it's like such a tacky name, but whatever. And Evie is her personal assistant, long put upon personal assistant, and then one thing leads to another. Evie has to impersonate Aveda at a event of some kind, and then the truth come out. Oh no, Evie actually has powers of her own. You kind of get like um, like a rivalry between the girls and it's also a romance and it also has lots of cool superhero battles. It's really silly. Like, do you know how to get demon blood out of leather pants? Well, Evie does. <laughs> they're great. I recommend to pieces. They're so funny and they're so exciting and they're, they're just great action-packed little jams. I love it. So I definitely recommend if you like superheroes, you'll love this. Another romance I'm recommending is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong. This is her debut novel and legit it was one of my favorite books I read in 2018. This is kind of a gender swapped pretty woman. So you have a woman named Stella who is um, a mathematician and she is also on the autism spectrum. She has Asperger's and she is trying to figure out like adult relationships in romance. So she hires a male escort named Michael and it's their kind of love story and it's so well written it's funny it's heartfelt the characters are very i don't know they're very three-dimensional and realistic you feel like they're real people even though like this is highly unlikely to ever happen in real life <laughs> but you still feel like oh maybe it could happen in real life it is a completely adorable story gender swap pretty woman i don't know what else i need to say because that already sounds awesome and it's just like a delightful Fairly smutty romance. I, I definitely recommend this one. I absolutely love books by Maureen Gu. She has many books, but this is probably my first and, and probably my favorite book I've read by her. I definitely recommend I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. It is adorable and wonderful. It is, it's a rom-com that makes fun of rom-coms. <laughs> it's a little meta, but great. We follow this girl named Desi who is a um, very type A personality, and she's like, ooh, I should figure out relationships. <laughs> I think I have like a kink apparently when it comes to romances, <laughs> and is like, I need to figure out relationships. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> Desi needs to figure out relationships and how they work, how does dating work. So she writes a comprehensive guide to romance based off of K-dramas. And along the way, she gets herself into many misadventures because K-dramas, like, I was talking about melodrama earlier, but like, K-dramas, like, they bring a whole new level of melodrama. <laughs> it's definitely a rom-com. It is hilarious. I legit laughed out loud through it. And it has, like, K-dramas, that twist in it, and it's, it's just a delightful book. I totally recommend. It's short and sweet. And you could definitely probably read it all in one day and just like smile. It's a smile book. It'll make you happy. I also recommend Marie Lu. She has a lot of different books out, but I picked Warcross in particular because this one actually takes place in Japan and it has many Asian characters in it. So I felt it was like more representation in one book. Warcross 
Warcross in particular, it is a uh, virtual reality. There is this game called Warcross and everyone in the world can get into it. Everyone has like VR like contacts or something. And you see overlays in like the real world, like virtual reality is everywhere. It's part of everyday normal life. We follow Amika Chen, who is a hacker extraordinaire. And one day she accidentally hacks herself into the world championship game of Warcross. Whoopsie doodles. So instead of getting you immediately arrested, uh, the owner of the company, Hideo Tanaka, who legit they like describe as being like, like Asian Bruce Wayne. Like he's like, <laughs> he's like broody and sexy. And like I was into it. But anyway, anyway, so he is like a young tech genius and he owns the game Warcross and he's like, hey Mika, you're good at like computer stuff. Why don't you work for me? And she's like, okay. <laughs> and there's more to it than that. I'm making it sound like a wacky rom-com. It is not, this is definitely more action-based. This is about virtual reality and video games and a much more sinister twist on uh, virtual reality and privacy and all those type of things. So it does go into some directions you may not be expecting it to go. I also really, really want to recommend The Bone Witch by Ren Chupeco. I have talked about this book series like a lot on this channel because I love it that much. And like, I don't see it get enough love. I don't see enough people reading it because it's really, really good. It is told in a really interesting way because it is told in alternating time periods. So you have time periods that are the present and then you have time periods of the past. So the present chapters is her telling the story of the past chapters. And um, the main character, Tia, is our protagonist, our narrator, and her past self is very, very different than her present self. Her present self could be considered the villain of the story or maybe the anti-hero of the story, but we're being told the story of how she gets to who she is in the present, which is like crazy cool. It's also about necromancy and it's a really interesting world. There's giant demons that she could control and she's a necromancer so she can bring back dead people. And there's all kinds of witches in here. It does have a lot of um, kind of memoirs of a geisha vibe, but like with witches. So if that sounds awesome to anybody else but me, which I think it probably does, then you're gonna love this. I also recommend Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nan. And legit, oh my gosh, I just read this recently and it has blown my mind with how good it is. This is like a fictional Asian inspired fantasy world where there are three casts of, of people. There are like the, the demon class and then there are people who are like partially demon and then you have like the paper class which are just like average humans. And in this world there's a demon king and every year he takes a harem of paper girls. And by taking a harem, you can understand what that means. It's like, let's be real, page one of this book is trigger warnings for sexual assault. So it does get very dark in places, but it is a rare example of a book that actually handles the subject matter in a really responsible and nuanced way, because I've seen a lot of books handle it very poorly. And it's always about sensationally how horrible that is. Look how horrible this is rather than like the long-term effects of what happened. The horrible part we all know is horrible. We don't need to see that on the page. This book isn't about that scene. It's about everything else that goes along with it. So really good. I recommend a lot. There are trigger warnings, so be aware of that. But I feel like it's handled so well that everyone could probably read it. And it also is an FF romance, and it, it's just like a million things of awesome all in one book. Like, just read it. It's great. It's a great book. I love it to bits. Last but not least on this list, I have to recommend Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. I know I've talked about this book a lot, but legit, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite books. This is a kind of Snow White retelling, except this is told from the Evil Queen's perspective before she's the Evil Queen, so it is an origin story. And it is kind of a fictional China. Uh, they never really say the country, but it seems like a fictional ancient China. And it is about the rise of the empress. So it's about this girl, Shi Feng, who is destined to become the evil queen. And it is so well written. Oh my gosh, it's such an interesting character because she's legitimately unlikable. She, she rips hearts out of people and eats them. Like, she's not a likable character. <laughs> but hot damn is she interesting. Like, I, I just, I always want to write about her. She is endlessly fascinating. 
her internal struggle with morality and like, am I evil or am I not evil? Because like, when you read the book, you're like, yeah, I mean, that bitch deserved to get her heart ripped out. Like she sucked. So, you know, you kind of sympathize with her, but then you're like, oh no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be rooting for someone to rip hearts out. Like that's the bad. So it puts you in a weird place as a reader, but Shi Feng is legitimately one of the best written characters I've ever read. I love her journey. This is so interesting. It's very dark and twisty turny and is definitely, um, it's a villain story and it's a really good villain story. Oh, I love it so much. So I definitely, definitely recommend this. Okay, so those are some really, really great recommendations about where to start if you were looking to, for, to try out some new Asian authors. These are all some of my favorite books, so I'm not gonna steer you wrong. These are all legit really good ones. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, have you read any of these books? If so, which one's your favorites? Uh, do you have any other authors that I maybe have missed on this list? Let me know a recommendation down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.